they they watched me constantly. It was sort of like the movie Enemy of the State, where it was really crazy. You know, my car would be tag team followed. My phone was obviously being listened to. I mean, it was just this excessive monitoring um, and and doing it in a way that you you, you know they're right in your face the whole time. Um, and then they sent me to prison. And after that, they didn't need to control me as much because my reputation had been dirty. Yeah, and a lot yeah, of people, yeah, yeah. All, all they see is, is I was accused of aiding and abetting a bank robbery. And so all they see, and that bank robbery was five minutes. Um, and there was no evidence ever produced that I was involved in it. But uh the the thing is is once they manage to get get that label that jacket on me why that carries that goes with me everywhere and um so it's it's one way to control me um yeah so they they love to dirty everybody and a large share of the politicians they have files on them that are they can send any of those guys to prison they have the dirt on them. They're blackmailed. And so that's just a common practice that they like to use. Is there anything you can do to fight back against it? I mean, <laughs> OK, if, if they if they are dealing with these higher beings and that's what makes them the Illuminati, why can't we be peasants? Why can't we deal with those higher beings? So we're supposed oh. to go, oh, no, they're evil. They're evil, yada, yada. But all the time we're being repressed by other human beings who, who are dealing with them. So why don't, why don't we just deal with them? Why don't we cut out the middleman that are keeping us squashed? Sorry, I know it's what? your turn now, uh, Brian, but I'm sure you won't mind. Why don't we get cracked on with um, interacting with fallen angels and um, why don't we become the Illuminati? Why do we have to sit in shit and be um, falsely accused of bullshit? I mean, why do we have to do that? It's like nonsense. Well, we, can ri- we can rise above it, Christine. That's what Christ was all about. Oh, God. So and we put on our sackcloth and ashes, you mean? Well, he he wasn't running around in, in sackcloth and ashes. But no. Uh, and maybe you have a negative attitude towards him, but I don't. When... I don't know. He was okay, really. He had his life. I've had a pretty bad life of of of, of constant shit, sexual abuse, violence, um, now reputation ruined, living in poverty, yada yada yada, experience homelessness. I really, I'm not having fun, and now I'm thinking, is this going to be passed on to my son? So I'm really quite angry about it. I don't have a negative view towards Christ but I do think why shouldn't I interact with the jinn or fallen angels and and get my little army um, sorted and start doing magic against people that are targeting me why do I have to sit back and and say well I'll leave it to them to interact with these beings and, and and I'll just sit here and pray I mean it's futile really I mean okay no prayers do get answered and I certainly did some magic but I mean why can't we get cracked on and doing gin magic etc I know Brian does (laughs) well okay so I'm not advocating you do magic but I I will say this If, if if one really begins to understand spiritually what Christ did, there's a human reaction to problem. It's either fight or flight, right? We either fight or we run. But Christ did neither. And he advocated for himself. So there's certainly a place to advocate for yourself. But what he did was, is he advocated for himself through love. We we can't use the same dirty tactics as the enemy. So it's like some people that were programmed, they were hoping that I would use programming to free them from programming. I wouldn't do that, you know. Um, 
And getting back to what I was saying, in the Word of God, it says that the wise, these people that are turning people to to righteousness, justification, they're going to shine like stars. So you asked me about the shining ones, you know, and they're, you know, they're, if you go to like the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which has many different variations of it, but in one variation in chapter 134, they say, oh, you shining ones, you men and God. So they're, they're talking about what the occult world sees these ethereal spirit-like beings, these shining ones, you know. Um, that's that's the pagan occult view that you've got these gods, you've got these creational forces of light, these ETs, you know. But we can be shining ones in a good sense, in, in the biblical sense, where we're wise and we're turning to people to righteousness, you know. Um, and in that sense, we look at Christ and at his transfiguration, it said his face did shine in, as the sun. Um, and, and he gave a parable. He said that the good seed, which are righteous people, they're going to shine forth as the sun. And um, so we, we do have paths of where we can rise above the evil that's around us, but we have to do it. We can't use their dirty tricks. We have to rise in a positive way. Otherwise, all we do is is we're like a, a pair of pigs getting into the mud um, or two dogs fighting. We've got to rise above that. Mm, I agree. Well, well done. Thank you. Brian? Yeah, hi. How are you doing, Fritz? It's really good. Thank hi. you um, for attending. Hi, yeah, I, I must um, thank you for when you wrote your book. I remember reading it a, a long time ago uh, and it really opened my eyes to, um, well, you know, the world. And of course, since then, uh, ruling families has become more or less the standard narrative of thinkers. Uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it's really, I think it's really quite, earth shattering what you did you know you, you you brought a new lexicon to you know to to, to, to ordinary people um, you know and, and I, I think through your work other work has come through like you know work like Lawrence Garnier and stuff like that you know it's, it's really it's really amazing what you do I, I was I was very intrigued listening to your account on um, ETs and the fact that they may be some kind of um, supernatural entity. Um, however, one thing that I, I would like to say, which you may be aware of, that that um, people who who uh, follow the jinn and follow the fairy will do very extreme things to their bodies, so that they go into a, a fractured time where in that fractured time, which they call fairy time, or they call the calf, is, is when they actually contact these entities. Yeah, I mean, this, this procedure literally is, you know, it probably goes back to Noah. It, it, it's a really, really old procedure. But I was really fascinated when I was listening to you talking that, that this, this so-called mind based um, programming really relates so strongly to to episodes with fairy jinn and other demonic entities yeah I, I find it really quite fascinating I, I, I was just wondering if you're actually aware of this technique which is used by um, people who participate in like fairy and jinn worship are, are you aware of it not okay. not directly like that, but yes, yes and no. I, I'm, uh, yeah, I bumped into that. Uh, so along that lines, the, uh, the United States has something called the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and then the Joint Chiefs of Staff have a group that are like their personal spies, the Joint Intelligence Committee, JIC. 
And they were directed to create a group called the Collins Elite. And the Collins Elite were directed to investigate what are these UFOs and aliens all about. And they concluded that they were devils from another dimension. Well, definitely they are coming from another def, uh, dimension. And um, so they're not coming from way far away. It's just like you're talking about the jinn and the fairies and everything. These are things that have been around for a long time. And I was listening in the early 90s. This would have been like maybe 1990 or 91. I was listening to a recording of an alien that somebody had made. And he was saying that he was, and I can't remember the specifics, something like, half million years old or something like this and i had to laugh to myself we should quit calling these people aliens they've been around longer than we have you know they need to at least get resident status so yeah these these different entities have been around a long time and people have been interacting with them for a long time um and yeah, I, I totally agree with you. yeah i totally agree a hundred percent. I mean, um, it's uh, it's really interesting that you mention this because quite a lot of uh, Muslim Sufi regard the UFO phenomena as as nothing more than the jinn. Yeah. So you know, I I think you're more than accurate in what you're saying. You know, and the Sufi religion goes back at least well in its present form about 1500 years and so for 1500 years they you know they have been stating that all this phenomena that we see in the sky etc etc is in fact um, entities from a different dimension to ourselves a, a parallel universe if you, if you wish yeah exactly. but they are able to cross over yeah cross over so yeah i think you're 100% accurate in your assumption really you know, the, the evidence is there, you know, the, 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 the does it matter, talk about this. Do, sorry, do, does it matter if we, oh. re if, if we interact with them? Because you interact with them, Brian. Brian interacts with them, Fritz. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the I mean, thing is, 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 is what you have to understand is, is I've been a lifetime occultist, yeah. Mm -hmm. However, um, communicating with, like, these um these entities is is not something that um i do lightly and it's not something that i do on a regular basis you know i i just don't do that you know um because i i'm aware of what the situation is you know i mean 90 percent of of um my time is spent improving myself through meditation etc 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 However, you know, sort of like, you know, you know, there has been times when I have communicated with, you know, with these entities, but, you know, but, but the point is, is that um, I've not used them for malicious purposes. And when I was hearing Fritz talking about how these, you know, how this programming is done on human beings, I was actually quite disgusted because in reality, uh, I don't see how anybody who can love humanity can torture another human being, you know, from from my perspective. Um, and so, you know, I don't, I don't think if you it, it matters if you're a Christian or whatever. The point is, 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 is not to harm, you know, and that's my rule is, is not to harm, if that makes any sense. Yeah. You know? and, and so thanks for I, I'm, I appreciate one thing here is you're stepping outside of the simplistic thinking where people are putting labels on things. I mean, there's a lot of Christian organizations, and I, I use Christian as not meaning that they're Christ-like, but that they're religious organizations that label themselves Christians. They're involved in the trauma-based mind control. You know, and I've exposed the Jehovah's Witnesses, that's the Watchtower Society, as being a front for the Illuminati. The LDS Mormon Church is, is a front for the Illuminati. Um, a lot of the 
charismatic churches are being used as a front for the Illuminati. Uh, 